Chapter 13 Tom Plans Jim's Escape That night, Tom told me how everyone reckoned I was murdered and how Pap disappeared pretty soon after and how no one had ever seen him since. I filled Tom in on all the details of the non-such scheme and our adventures on the raft. Then we got to talking about where Jim could be hidden. Look here, Huck. What fools we are not to think of it before, cried J Tom. I bet I know where Jim is. But how could you, I asked. Well, Hucky, on my way here, I saw a slave go into a hut down by the edge of the plantation. He was carrying food. The hut had a lock on it, and a lock meant there had to be a prisoner. So the food had to be for the prisoner. What a head for just a boy to have. If I had Tom Sawyer's head, I wouldn't trade it to be a duke or a mate on the steamboat or a clown in a circus. I knew pretty well that Tom would think of some complicated plan to free Jim. And sure enough, after a while, Tom said he wanted to think of a wonderful, mysterious way to get Jim out of the hut. Why don't you just saw a hole in the wall and let Jim slip on out, I suggested. But Tom only laughed. There has to be a more interesting way than that to get him out, he said. He thought for a while, then cried out, I have it. We'll dig a tunnel to get him out. It'll be a hard job, but at least it'll be more mysterious and more complicated than just sawing a hole. So he talks more about Tom's plan, then we decided that we had to go and see Jim. We waited for the slave, we carried the food to the hut, then followed him. Tom gave him a dime, and he let us in to see Jim. Of course, we didn't tell him we knew Jim, we simply acted as though we were curious to see what a real runaway slave looked like. Jim was real happy to see us. He practically cried for joy, but before Jim could say a word, Tom leaned over and whispered, Don't ever let on that you know us, and if you hear any digging going on during the night, it's us. We're going to set you free. Jim grabbed both of us by the hands and squeezed real hard, so we knew how thankful he was. The next morning, Tom was upset about the plan. Blame it, he cried. The whole thing is just as easy as it can be. There's nothing wonderful or mysterious about it. It sure is difficult to think up a complicated plan. There isn't any watchman to be drugged, there isn't even a dog to give a sleep mixture to, and there's Jim chained by one leg with a ten-foot chain to the leg of his bed. Why, all you have to do is lift up the bedstead and slip off the chain. <laughs> Why, dratty hook, it's the stupidest arrangement I've ever seen. We have to invent all the difficulties and dangers ourselves. Well, we'll just have to do the best we can with the materials we got. But we gotta get a saw. When I asked why he needed a saw, Tom got real angry. What do we want with a saw? Don't we have to saw off the leg of Jim's bed so we can get the chain loose? It was clear to me that Tom would do anything the easy way if there was a more complicated method available. In addition to the saw, he also needed sheets to make a rope ladder. The fact that Jim could easily have reached the ground from the hut didn't matter to Tom one bit. That night we began digging under the hut. The work was hard and sweaty, but after about two and a half hours, the job was done. We crept in under Jim's bed and into the cabin. Tom brought a candle, which we lit, and then we stood looking at Jim as he slept. He looked hearty and healthy. We woke him up gently. He was so glad to see us, he almost cried. He thought we were going to sneak him out that night, but Tom showed him how uninteresting that would be. Then he sat down and told him all about our plans and how he could change him in a minute at any time there was an alarm. He assured Jim that everything would go smoothly and not to be afraid of anything. So Jim said it was alright, and we sat there for a while and talked over the old times. Jim told us that Mr. and Mrs. Phelps came in to see him every day and that they were very kind and gave him plenty to eat. That night, Tom added some extra frills to his plans. He wrote a letter and shoved it under Aunt Sally's front door. The letter said, Beware. Trouble is brewing. Keep a sharp lookout. Unknown friend. Tom said this would make the whole escape much more exciting and dangerous. The next night, Tom drew a picture of a skull and crossbones and blood, and we stuck it on the front door. And the next night, he drew another one on the coffin and stuck it on the back door. Everyone was in a sweat. If a door banged, Aunt Sally jumped and cried, Ouch! If anything fell, she screamed. So the thing was working very well, Tom said. He never saw a thing work more satisfactory. Now he said it was time for the big move. So the very next morning at daybreak, we got another letter ready. But now, Mr. Phelps had guards all at the doors. Aunt Sally had gotten so frightened that she made her husband have a slave stand watch each door, day and night. Tom waited until he saw one of the slaves fall asleep. Then he slipped the letter under the front mat. This letter was longer. It said, Don't betray me. I wish to be your friend. There's a desperate gang of cutthroats from over in the Indian Territory who are planning to steal the runaway slave tonight. They've been trying to scare you, so that you will stay in the house. 
and do not bother them. I am one of the gang, but now I have gotten religion and want to do the right thing. They will sneak down from the north along the fence at midnight. They have a false key and will go into the hut and steal the slave. Slip into the hut and lock them in. Don't do anything but what I have told you here. I only want to do the right thing. Unknown friend. Once the letter was hidden under the doormat, Tom quietly tiptoed back into the house and up to bed.